my name is Martin McKibben. I'm a consultant in the eye clinic at St James's in Leeds, and uh, and I was asked to come and speak to you about a small project which I did, which is not not um, shattering in its information, but it was a project which is completed, um, and that was about vision in the UK biobank study. And, I, and I, in my job, I, I see um, you know people with with eye diseases, and I've also got some uh, research time, so I'm. Uh, actively involved in, in research and I was very attracted with the idea of UK Biobank just the size of, of the database that it would collect so it would take it would be my life's work trying to get access to the data itself let alone do the analysis so I, I realized quite early on what a great resource um, the UK Biobank was for people like me who are interested in doing research and there's now an, an eye and vision consortium which is made up of eye doctors like me and scientists who are involved in vision research and they come from um, uh, eye departments and university departments. So there's a quite an, an active consortium and there are in all sorts of different groups um, as I think you know from the prior speaker we've even got rheumatologists in there, I don't quite know how they got in but people are interested in various aspects of, of, of eye disease and eye measures and to see what are the consequence of those and the risk factors for those. Um, so in, in my day to day job um, I only see people who've got problems affecting the back of the eye and my teenage daughter has absolutely no idea what I'm talking about when I say it's the film inside a camera. She just looks at me blankly and says, films, cameras, what, you know, what are you on about? Yeah. Um, anyway, so I see people who've got retinal disease, which is a disease affecting the film inside the camera, if you use that analogy. And uh, most of the people I see are, are older, and usually when I ask them, they tell me they've already got, they're known to have other conditions, so high blood pressure and diabetes and they're smokers. And for them, their eye disease is a, is a marker of the fact that they're... Um, uh, of, of generalised ill health and for the ones who don't yet have their uh, generalised ill health my suspicion has always been that, that actually the eye disease is the first sign of problems about to come. So what, so what I hoped to do with UK Biobank was to look at the people who we knew had some visual impairment at, at the time they were enrolled, find out what were the factors, what were the risk factors and possibly new associations that led to the development of their eye disease um, and because of all the data being collected in UK Biobank, I had 19 different measures from socioeconomic status, um, physical measures, so body mass index, waist hip ratio, lifestyle factors including diet and smoking, and then medical history. So I could look at all of those in the people who did have visual impairment and those who didn't, and, and that would be a case control study. Um, so, uh, my memory, uh, although I didn't participate in UK Biobank, was that everybody had a questionnaire or an interview. It wasn't quite this sort of interview, it was more of a touch screen questionnaire with a verbal interview, I think, to clarify things. So that was done on uh, 500,000, and I think at the beginning that did include a little bit of eye health data. And then about 120,000 went on to have additional eye data collected, and that included measuring their their vision and trying to work out should they have been wearing glasses and if so were their glasses correct. And then about 60,000 had uh, imaging of the back of the eye uh, with one of these things and they also had a scan done of their eye. So uh, this is a photograph of the back of a healthy eye. I don't think it's my eye but it is a healthy eye. So just to talk you through it, uh, this is the, the retina, this is the so-called film in the camera. It's often got that orangey sort of red colour. These are the normal blood vessels that carry blood uh, to the retina, and this is the nerve at the back of the eye which relays the message from your eye back to, back to your brain. So that's what a normal eye looks like. And if you'd taken that eye out and sliced it up a bit like a tomato and then looked at it under a microscope, you'd get an image very similar to this. So this is a scan of the back of the eye, and the machine that was used both took a photograph and took a scan. So you, you'll see the number 70 up there, so it took 126 scans, and that's what your retina would look like if it was, uh, if you did um, give it up for science and for looking at. So normally it gets a bit thinner in the middle, which is just what this does, and it's composed of a series of uh, alternating coloured bands. So my plan, my strategy, was that I would look at the data that people gave from the interviews, um, and I would also look at whether they were wearing glasses or contact lenses, or whether they'd forgotten them and, uh, and should have been wearing them. So I would add that to the grading of the images. So we'd look at all the images from everybody who had uh, impaired vision in one or both eyes and that would come up with the diagnosis so it was quite a simple plan. So uh, we started off looking at the images to try and work out you know what did we think was the main cause of visual impairment so that's another normal eye and this is one that you might look at it and think well I can just about see a nerve there 
but it's almost as if there's a filter or something in the way that's stopping the camera from getting a good view. So we worked out that this is probably cataract. That's very common. Yeah. So cataract means it's difficult for, for the camera to take a picture of the back of the eye, and it's equally difficult for people to see through it. And uh, ignore that, that sort of green box. That just shows where the scan was done. So we looked to see if there was cataract or anything else that was stopping the camera from getting a good view of the back of the eye. Uh, we looked to look at the nerve here. So this person has probably almost certainly got glaucoma. I can't remember if they knew they did or didn't. So we look at the function of the structure of the nerve. Uh, we looked at the blood vessels in the retina. So you can see here, these blood vessels have got some white sort of stuff around them, which is probably fibrosis. They probably had a blocked blood vessel some time ago. Um, and then we looked at, in detail at problems affecting the surface of the retina and inside the retina. And there's a sort of vague shimmery sort of reflex there. So they've probably got, this person probably had some scar tissue over the surface of the retina. <clears throat> and that subtle things like that are quite difficult to see on a photograph. They're suddenly much more obvious to see on the scan. So um, this person's got visual impairment because the jelly in the middle of the eye is sort of pulling on it. It's nipping it like this, uh, which is affecting the central bit of the vision. So you, you can't see that if you look in somebody's eye. You can't see it on a photograph. You need a scan like this to, to pick it up. Um, and this person's got, for example, a, a hole in the retina. So they've got a macular hole, and that would be uh, uh, why their vision would be impaired. So we, we tried to look at the, uh, the, the, the front of the eye, look at the retina, look at the nerve, and look at various things to work out what the cause of it was. Um, and then, uh, as I said, we also took account of whether somebody was wearing glasses at the time, or if they said, look, I, I should have glasses, but I've forgotten them, or I've bought my reading pair, and I haven't got my distance pair. And then um, because their prescription was sort of measured at the time, we could try and work out, w if we couldn't find any other reason, was it because they should have been wearing glasses but, but weren't? So um, uh, as I said, the Biobank was a wonderful resource. Um, I was told that about 63,000 people had had a vision test done on both eyes and had a, a photograph uh, and had given a history of, of eye disease. So that was my group that I was looking at. And of those, just under 8,500 uh, had visual impairment in one or both eyes. So my original plan was to look at, at the images for those 8,500, compare it with four times the number of people who didn't have visual impairment, and then try and work out what were the differences between them. But I was a little bit nervous about how easy or, or how useful analysing images would be. So I decided I would start off looking at a quarter, and I got funding to do that from a commercial um, firm who were interested in the data. So, in, so of the 2,000 sets of, uh, of people whose eyes, eye images I looked at, um, about 12% of them had visual impairment either in one eye, which means they had one bad eye and one good eye, or they had problems with their vision in both eyes. And, and there was a cutoff which we used, which is fairly well defined. So about 13% had it, and about four having impaired vision in one eye was about four times more common. And, and most of the visual impairment was mild or moderate. Having severe visual impairment was, was rare. So we, we tried to look and see what factors were more common in the people who did have impaired vision in one or both eyes compared to those who didn't. And we found some things which added to your risk. So for the large group of people who only had visual impairment in one eye, you were less likely to be black or black uh, British ethnicity. You were more likely to be deprived. So depending on your postcode, um, you can attach a, a, what's called a deprivation index to it. And, and that will look at a variety of factors which are, which are known for people who live in that area. And the richer or less deprived you are, the higher your score. So you might have a score of one, whereas if you're uh, very socioeconomically deprived, you'll have a score of five. So, so our data suggested that you are more likely to have visual impairment in one eye if you were more deprived. Yeah. But we don't know if, that's, if that was the cause of the visual impairment or if that was a consequence. So you know, it may be that people who, who can only see out of one eye um, you know, they struggle, struggle at school, they struggle in education, they struggle to get a good job. Um, and then you were more likely to be a current smoker if you had visual impairment in one eye. And then looking at the people who had problems with their vision in both eyes, um, they were typically older, they were more likely to be blacks so rather than less likely. Um, typically they were more likely to be um, uh, deprived socially, economically, and they were also more likely to be unable to work, unemployed, or need a carer. And, and that's sort of something you could imagine being a consequence of your visual impairment. So we, we, when I went through it, we had a whole load of, of possible reasons to why somebody might have visual impairment in one or both eyes. Disappointingly for me, um, we couldn't work out at all why people had visual impairment in about half the cases. 
Yeah. So that's probably a limitation of the of the reliance on eye history and then the images. But for the identifiable groups, we found lazy, having a lazy eye was the most likely cause of visual impairment when you, only one eye was affected. Um, and then cataract, um, not forgetting your glasses, having the wrong glasses or not wearing glasses when you should have done was a big cause. Um, and then having sort of problems affecting the surface of the retina was an another cause. So in summary, um, going back to my, my daughter outside there, who'll be on to a third glass of wine by now. Um, <laughs> so uh, my, my experience of looking at, uh, at the eye group in Biobank was the image quality was variable, but the scans were particularly helpful in identifying <coughs> disease. And I think one of the findings that uh, is publishable from my data is that um, problems affecting the surface of the retina probably account for about 4% of, of visual impairment in people in the UK Biobank cohort. Um, and I don't think that's been uh, found before for a similar population. Um, disappointingly, we couldn't work out the cause in about half um, the participants. Um, and overall, the frequency of visual impairment was slightly lower than for populations, um, but that probably represents the fact that you could opt into UK Biobank, and I think people who were in UK Biobank were typically um, healthier and had less uh, disease. Um, and the four most common identifiable causes we found were having a lazy eye, forgetting your glasses, having cataract, or having this problem affecting the surface of the retina. Um, and visual impairment, we, we did note, was in associated. You were more likely to be visually impaired compared to those who weren't if you were older, if you were uh, more socioeconomically deprived, if you were unemployed or unable to work, and if you were a smoker. Thank you very much.